Hello, welcome. It's Hard Lord time. How are you, Bo? I'm blending in with this couch, I just realized. You really are. That's disgusting. Shit. Uh, mustard men, we are here live in Manchester, United Kingdom for a very special in-person episode with a, a, a highly anticipated, long-awaited guest, beloved friend of the show. Uh, beloved character. I feel I've been buried a few no, times. No, no, no. That's uh, the thing. That, Josta buried That's me. A- <laughs> We're gonna get it. What do you well, say? Well, he just, said we should do the remixes. I forget. I love him so. Well, he also. Do you remember the one thing with Justin and you well, that I forgot to bring up on? on we'll his? tell that story. For that sure. one is so good. I dude. tell every person that it's so good. Uh, but <laughs> who do we got? More or less, this is uh, our good friend, Code Orange frontman, musical innovator, extreme music science, mosh science, PhD, masters, chemistry. Breakdown like art, art degree. Yeah, art down. Breakdown art degree. Uh, gallery that? opening guy. Our very good friend, Jamie Morgan. Code Orange. Jamie Thanks for having me. Morgan. Welcome. Pleasure. Pleasure to have you. Finally. I'm happy to do it. Me and Colin did an interview. We canned it. We didn't even have a damn thing to talk about, and we just got rid of we it. We were just vibing. Yeah. It, yeah. Was, it was just straight. Vibing a little too hard. Oh, like, <laughs> a little too hard. I thought back and thought, not, we not, can't use not that. my thought. current chess move. None of that. You thought no. something's missing. Yeah. Bishop got taken there. Queen got fucked. Anyway. <laughs> we were in the corner. Everybody, we had we didn't fit into the situation at all. No. Well, we're, we're barely fitting into this one, frankly. <laughs> but, but I would like to say something. These two are not sinking the chair it's just for some reason the chairs that we're on have no bottom because we're in a certain land where things don't make sense <laughs> where ergonomics are not uh willy wonka is the prime minister willy wonka yeah, he designed it but you want to sit down you must stand up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's so many things i have to wake up here and just try to like figure out like i'm in some one like where the vehicle we're in we're all walking like this so already we're in like tim burton fantasy land i'm like walking around like this the whole time. <laughs> Now we're in this tiny room where all the chairs are like bent like yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just in like a fantastical village all the time. We just got to make it work, you know? We've been doing it just for a, a few, long time. few you, more days. You've been doing it. You've been grinding nonstop while we've been mostly sitting at home. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the ring. Are you okay? Sure. Yeah, you are. Are you okay? I'm good, man. Good. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm hurting physically a little bit, but Joe actually has a big crack in his hip. Um, Dom's got foot surgery just got. Yeah. So Jesus I keep Christ. hitting my head. So Fuck yeah. <laughs> a lot of, a lot what of, happened to Joe's head the other day? I wanted to ask you. At Hellfest. The bloody no head. comment. No comment? No comment. You gotta he watch picked the, the booger a little too hard or what? <laughs> he hard weighed. Oh, did he? Yeah. Did he really? Badass. Jesus. Yeah. It was real. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It wasn't for the performance at all. Oh, okay. He, 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 uh. <laughs> He had a blade in that armband or what? A we're monster the, we're the biggest monster work- branded razor blade? We're the biggest workers who ever lived. I know, uh, you really <laughs> are. The most successful. And at working. Has that do you ever feel that that has bit you in the ass? No, because we are who we are. We 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 we're genuine about working. What we do. We we we're, do we're, you- we're just, you know, we all we care for each other. We're pretty insulated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what you see is what you get. Do I you th- believe in in going 100 percent every night? 1,000 percent. I would. I, I will. So there's never night. there's never like a thing where it's like okay we got Hellfest coming up. How many thousands of people watched? I don't a lot. A lot. It was good. They're huge. That was awesome. So so let's say you're playing a local show before whether you did or didn't. Let's just say hypothetically. Mm-hmm. You're playing a smaller show that maybe didn't, not that many people showed up. I know that wouldn't happen to you. It did just happen. But, I, but I'm just did saying. Did it twice or four. It, so, there, so there you go. On this tour? Yeah. So so do you, on those sets. Hard as possible. Really? Fuck die yeah. up there. That's the only way to do it. It's not. I, I, it is. It's not. You should. It should be. It, it should I won't, be. I won't no do way. it any it other way, man. I really, it's not on some like. Because here's the thing. Yeah. Think about the 10 Bulgarian kids that were here. Yesterday. No, no, no. I'm not saying just stand there. I'm just saying you don't got to hard wear yourself at oh. night. He did that. I mean, That's I, I, I honestly, exclusive. I genuinely don't know how he got cut, but I just know that all of a sudden, if we're having a bad set, I look over and that fucker's cut. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing, and those, I'm like, I love this. If there's 10 people there, you give those 10 people something they will never forget. I'm so not they saying a hundred. Like you never, you will never guess what these. I'm not disagreeing with that. But what I am saying is if you have a, a set coming up where 
potentially 10,000 people can be watching. Oh, yeah. Go hard. You don't necessarily want to break yourself before that. I know. Shoot your voice sure. out. I know, but I just can't. Amen. I'm addicted to He's it. He's addicted to suffering. It's, it's, I just feel, I just really want to give it. I, it's all we have. It's, it's all, it's what we have. I really feel it's like we, we really take a lot of pride in being great live. Yeah. And not being great by just being sloppy and throwing ourselves around and doing front flips. But I think we're really good at sounding good and, being pretty tight most of the time while still really putting in a lot of energy you know and that's what i really want to i do genuinely want to give that at every show small or, or big i come from the same school of thought with a band that believes in a very similar philosophy yeah, and these are knees are done i know me too you know what i mean so i just can't i want people to be careful no, blow them saying. knees out don't do kill it. those knees for art let's go back in time let's go back in time do do we go back to the beginning of the origin of the band Sure. Tell me about old ska finger Eric. How how Code Orange Kids came together when you were all the youngest lads. So I had a band when I was like 12, and we even made a documentary, which I need to send you. Is that true? What? Yes, but it's not findable. I just watched it the other day. That's why this is fresh in my memory. Okay. Long story short, that band broke up. We literally played like shows with like 40 year olds when I was like 12 years old. Like we would play like Were clubs you still Code Orange Kids? No, it was a different band. Oh, wow. So I did that band and it was like a three piece like Green Day. We actually, we would cover like Green Day. We would cover like the Ramones. Okay. We would cover like just any song really that existed pretty much. Yeah. And uh, we had our own <laughs> songs and we made CDs. We were pretty over, honestly. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if honestly, people know who know we were over. Like yeah. we played shows, people went insane. The the, the ladies were going batshit. It was <laughs> it was over. Anyway, long story short, we break up. I'm I'm heartbroken already. Yeah. Start the journey heartbroken yeah. right away. And then, uh, yeah, I met Reba and um, a couple other kids, and we just started a new thing. We met Eric right away. And then we met Joe. Really? It was it all just kinda happened like that. Yeah. Joe didn't Joe. join the band playing until we were like nineteen. Yeah. But we started when we were like fourteen. But he just he was so dedicated that when we got out of high school we were all like, We're some of us are gonna try to go to college. So two three of us did. We moved to Philly. He moved with us. Yeah. Whoa. He wasn't even in the band. He was the Steve Zing to your Danzig. Hey, oh. There we go. Joe Goldman is Steve Zing. And he Zing. would mosh and be... sell shit. That's eerie. You're now involved. Steve Zing was was grew up with Danzig and was like I'm going to play in a band. Don't question oh. him about Danzig. Well, shit. I will yeah, because Erie Vaughn also same thing. Danzig, same Danzig, thing. you have many. You are Danzig. You have many guys who are in <laughs> and, and girls who are. <laughs> nah, but dude, he he uh, he was just loyal soldier, and so we lost people. I remember telling Shade, I was like, we should have Joe join the band, and he goes, if Joe joins the band, I'm out. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> Joe was crazy. Well, I remember the first two years of Code Orange. <laughs> Goldman was not playing. Yeah. He was just going hard as fuck, and that's why it worked. And I oh. witnessed him witness this. Like fake playing, you're saying? Fake playing, but he I was also... Trying. No, no, what I saw was there was a set of yours that was recorded, and the, he, before putting the bass down, the set finishes, he goes up to the engineer and goes, don't you fucking put that out. <laughs> oh, my God. I've done that to Sonny like five times. Boy, you have to. <laughs> I've literally gone up to Sonny, I'm like... It disappears. That one is dead. Do it's gone. Gone. And he's always like, "Yes, he's cool about it." I told him not to put something in from the E Tid thing we played right before COVID, and he left it in. Yeah. He, he doesn't have. He you don't it. have his respect. Yeah. I haven't forgotten. We're not for you. You ain't PA. <laughs> anyway. No, just his number one most viewed clip. Um, <laughs> so yeah, what, what was that? Running gimmick. Fucking hell. What was after you guys that? Guys, our gimmick central man. Yeah. Got the running gimmick. Got the cast. We got it all. We got. We're working the fucking net. We were working. What'd you say? We're workers. You think you're the only workers, brother? <laughs> what was after? Uh, so once Goldman joins, was Death Wish the first thing? No. So we like, we're from Pittsburgh, and especially at the time, it was very insulated, and it's a very strange mixture of music cultures, you know. So we we just floated in this in-between of basically knowing nothing about the outside world which Colin can attest to 100% and while still being influenced you know by really heavy shit hard shit like punk shit weird stuff you knew what you wanted but you didn't know where to find it so is yeah so we did our own thing we were on some real small labels we booked our own tours literally out of a notebook calling people and how stuff joe actually helped book our first tours mm -hmm. in this in in like the summer after high school or in high school i don't when, know when was high school when did you graduate oh 
Not to when would it have been like? I'm 30 now, so when would it have been? Probably 2012, 10, 11. 11. Yeah. So okay. yeah, I just turned 30. So yeah, congrats. Well, making it to 30 it sucks, dude. You guys know. Yes, it does. 30's dope. You 20. Like uh, you know what's? We say this all the time. 27 was the worst, and then yeah. once I turned 30, it was like, oh, nothing matters. I'm digging 30. We're good. I'm about to yeah, be 32. Good. Can you yeah. believe that? You're good. You're we're doing 36. great. These are probably the best. You, this is the two, I feel best, good. two best years of your run. I feel good. You're on top. But anyway, enough about me. So uh, when did the when what would, did you have demos like how long were you putting out stuff we had before many demos, many demos. Yeah. we were painting the covers we were drawing the, it's many all genres. the same shit as now many yeah. ideas but we met uh, just to jump back like we met Shade just by like posting shit on MySpace and e-comedies like, I'm in your same high school I like Scott <laughs> <laughs> and you sure love Scott met him the next day Holy so he kind of did he only really knew like Operation Ivy and like yeah. We didn't know what the fuck was going on. We like we were doing hardcore shows. We were doing punk shows. We were doing house shows. We were yeah. playing with the Menzingers in yeah. a basement. Yeah. We used to play with them in a basement like every weekend, like right. at this guy's house. We would throw like parties like when we were fifteen. Mm -hmm. Then we were doing shit with my buddy, you know, who now runs the big venue in Pittsburgh, preserving. He was driving us around. Just a amalgamation of strange things combined, mm -hmm. you know, until we kind of got spit out into the real world. And that carries through and to the today. Cycle seven inch, yeah, exactly. Cycle seven inch was before the first LP, right? Yes, we kind of had a little group of. We had this tape, and we had that seven inch, and we had a split, and like kind of the same way we do now. They all had like kind of a threaded yeah. continuity. Gotcha. Uh, the split song. Mm -hmm. With a what was like a four way split? Well, that's one of one. Dude, we did that with, song rocks. You like that song? Oh my god! That was you a gotta Tiger Jaw and shit. Tiger Jaw and oh yeah, defense and uh, world is a beautiful place. Which was a good move doing that because you got them, dude. Dude, I didn't know. I just knew the people, yeah. and I, we were with. That's another one. We were with Tiger's Jaw every other weekend at this place in Ohio, and I became good friends with Adam from Tiger Jaw, and so that it was very organic in that way. And then we did the one with Full of Hell as well. Mm -hmm. So right mm. in that time period, and that all led up to that first LP. And then I think after the Full of Hell and the Cycles one is when we went to Death Wish. Gotcha. Cause you, so you were on first LP when at that first This Is Hardcore, where we played back to back. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was where it was like I got a taste of you musically. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, they're pretty hard. You know, they're a pretty hard band. That, I didn't expect that. Yeah. You know? I think I got a taste. It was... You guys played the Bottom Lodge in Chicago, Terror, Backtrack. You guys, I don't know. That was much later, else. right? No, could That was been. later than. Oh, that was, that was I, post I don't know. King. Maybe that was in the. No, 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 it was before. He's right. All that shit with Terror we did was going into that record. They were, they was, they were, they opened. Because that it was, was like when. Brand new. So you guys were, were outcasts from yeah. childhood to. Still are. <laughs> well. 100% still are. Well, but yeah. there was a period. There was a period. It was literally a year. <laughs> One year. No, one, I mean one year and a half. I was feeling the rumblings about a year and a half into it. I was like, it's over already. No, it was so it was longer. Up. I can tell you, just peripherally, it was yeah. longer. It's longer than that. Mm -hmm. um, but like, you guys were so undeniable at your craft that Thank the you. the people that outcast you cast you back in. It's you like, know, get back. It was like, damn, this band is they're playing magic. Mm -hmm. At the, in the back of the show, and then they go out and they're playing the hardest riffs of the night. I distinctly remember at that bottom line show, I like didn't really watch you guys. Friends were in town, blah blah blah, you know. Then our tour in Europe, we played Fluff Fest. The three of our oh, bands yeah. played together, that was fun. and I watched watched you guys. And that that was 2013. It was, and that was when I was like, oh, that was like so my that's right like, after that LP ah. came out. And yes. that, so that all makes perfect. That sense. was the year where we really hit it off. Yes. and I remember the moment. Do you remember the moment? The New England thing? New England yeah. Metal Hardcore Fest. I, I watched them from the balcony. Yeah. Tears in my eyes. Are you serious? I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, this, I wasn't alone in this. Yeah. My jaw was gaped. <laughs> for lack of a better word. Sean, truly. control yourself. It was... I'm tearing up now. Because yeah. I see these I little this. these little fucking forest nymphs. Yeah. These little freaks. Yeah. These three shirtless guys... And the coolest girl that's ever mm -hmm. existed. Rock. Dude. And then I'll never forget it. Because the, the, the part is on I Am King, but you play it differently than you did at the show. The dun dun dun. Oh, yeah, we were still working on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. 
and it was it was i remember just hearing that and being like this is what they fucking sound like yeah okay thinking I like what do they like we were, yeah. Yeah, i remember yeah. who we were, is this yeah. we were starting to infuse at that point going into that record it's kind of complicated but we were we were like infusing even that record has little bits of hard breakdowns you know it does. but it's they're put in a strange way mm-hmm. you know and so we were playing with the idea of adding some simpler but hard elements in there as well Mm -hmm. and so during the sets we would just throw random parts into other songs it was awesome just we would be practicing all the time so we'd be like we'd be practicing so much that it was like we were trying to find stuff to do in the set yeah i mean that's one thing I, i i would love to talk about is i don't know if people know how dedicated you guys were from the rip Thank you. From my awareness of you as a unit, I remember hearing that like nobody like you guys just did the band. Mm-hmm. How how long has the band been like full time? Full time. The day it started. Yeah. I mean, it's since I was fourteen. And like that's not hyperbole. No, that was, like, you had a you had a just a like yeah. ass- self assurance that it was like I'm going to do this or I'm going to die. Yeah. That is how I felt. That's kind of how I still feel in a different way. Would you? <laughs> Would you? Yeah. Would you guys practice like every day? Like if yes. you're off of a touring cycle or whatever, you're at home for a month. We would, yeah. You'd practice a every lot, day, yeah, yeah. Because we just felt that we just always felt up against it in different ways. So it was always like, all right, we just need to be the best, you know, yeah. and and do what hopefully we did to him, which is like maybe make people peek through the glass window a little more and, and, and look a little deeper into it because they're just kind of like, whoa, you know, yeah. this is something. They don't know what it is, but it's something. The performance was so visceral and different uh, that I had to like just talk to them. I see. He did. He came right up I, after I the had, set. I've never done that. Yeah. It was and awesome. I was, I was like, I have to know you. Interesting. Then we hung out all day, I think. All day, yeah. Um, in Worcester? In Worcester. I showed them in love. There's no law before it was out. We had literally Damn. no friends. Wow. Literally none. I like, need I was like, I like need only I need to know all of you. And random yeah. other weird people. Yeah, like, yeah. We had yeah. a circle of strange individuals, but they were like the one of the first bands from the more traditional hardcore scene, though their band is not traditional at yeah. all. No, obviously. Yeah, we know what you but mean. they're but they were involved in that and it was cool. It was like we just wanted to, you know, wanted to make friends pretty much with with like minded people who are also kind of. I think we connected because they felt they were on the in, but on the out, mm-hmm. still are yeah. different now in this Always. moment. But they were on a similar path to what we were on in terms of people not necessarily being able to look at it and take it at face value. There was there are brief periods where people do, yeah. but the rest of it is kind of built by. And your band is sort of there. I, I would say it's a little that. different. Yeah. I think maybe even solely because of James and stuff, something about that. Mm-hmm. But you can't that, be that sexy and like not. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what there's it is. There's nothing to get. No, right? But your band's in there too, yeah. there's especially parts of yeah. It, there's parts of it that I would say we identify with. There's for ebbs sure. and flows yeah. always. So just being like kind of feeling outcasted and, and then being able to kind of meet people who had a like mind like some of the stuff we liked some of the stuff we liked they were like what the fuck are you so talking then about I, so then I had to put you on you, you know, know what it, it, yeah, absolutely none of us were playing New York hardcore it's really I mean not that there's yeah. anything wrong with we New sure as hell weren't no. but, <laughs> that's but damn like, sure. all three of yeah. our bands were not in this vein that especially at the time there was also no metalcore leaning right. bands yeah, except no. us and y'all yeah. and they weren't but it was a little bit of a different thing and there was incendiary kick around doing a different style mm-hmm. of that but there was no bands that were young no, doing if that you were weird style. in any way yeah. you were not on the the main tours with the bands yeah, that's- we didn't do a proper support tour until 2017 who was that with with like no warning yeah wow. the life and death was our first like normal support tour. We did Terror for 75 bucks and it was pretty hard. <laughs> but it was dope, right? <laughs> yeah. It was, probably awesome. it was great. I mean, the first two weeks were hard, but on that tour, it was Terror, it was Backtrack, yeah. Dan Seeley from King Nine was the merch guy. Yeah. Um, a bunch of those guys were just there. Mm-hmm. And the first two weeks, no one said a single solitary word to us at all the whole time. <laughs> and then there was ice broken and then we all became really tight. James and- Vitalo broke the ice, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What do you do? You know. You know. Can't talk about it? Ah. Bushido code. Code of honor, <laughs> yeah. brother. But, uh, no, but... Uh, but there was definitely a, hey, 
moment, you know? Yeah. Right. We're good now. Yeah, Jimmy brought you and, in. And I'm still close with a lot of those people. I'm, Dan Seeley has basically kept up with us our entire path. When I'm in New York, he's there. When we play Brooklyn, he's there. Mm-hmm. When we're literally doing stuff for the label, he came to eat with us in the label when we signed to the label, which is us, him, and the label, like, and we signed the fucking shit. He's a king. So that's one of my brothers. So we met yeah. some people that we've stayed. Martine from Terror. Mm-hmm. Have I've stayed close with him the whole time. He's just came to our show in LA. So some of those people we still stay really close with. So Good. it was a great experience. Then you had a statement to make with the next one. And what a and statement it was. Good God, Good did Lord. you? And I, like straight up, I was along with you for this entire ride. Yeah, I that's feel right. Like. You were all the yeah. way to the next record as well because you came on. I literally either you were putting us on a tour, or I was putting you on a tour <laughs> for the whole four the whole years. whole thing. So. Watching I Am King take place, workshopping the title with you. You showed us the record, I remember, in yeah. a van outside the bee kitchen. Yeah. Telling you not to cut Reba's hair for the for the album art. Brother, don't go dirt, dirt cheat on me. <laughs> brother, brother. But, That's a brother warning. No. <laughs> Strike one. <laughs> They didn't. It's Goldman on there, you know, and that was that was the uh, the perfect move. Yeah. Now we would just yeah. experiment the same way we would now with different ideas of how to. We wanted to present, and it's really not an image. It's more we wanted to present like an aesthetic idea. Yeah. The same thing we uh-huh. do now. It's like so. He used to make fun of me so bad for what I'd be wearing and stuff during those times. But we would, you know, we wanted to look different. Yeah. We wanted it to feel different to people. I started to. You know, connect even before that we did as well, but in a different way. Yeah, yeah. But we connected like, okay, what do like a lot of the bands we like have in common? Okay, they make this great music. Okay, they have art that has like synergy to it and and matters. They the way they look even kind of matters for us. That's yeah. not everyone's path. Yeah, yeah. But and so we would consider those things in the process and think of like, okay, what are cool things we could do to kind of evolve it in a hopefully a way that is really natural to what we all like and what we're inspired by, but also is like presents as a unit. Yeah. We don't want to present as not a unit because to me, it's just like, I don't like that. When I see that, I'm, I'm out. Yeah. I don't want to see bands personally, you know, that are just, it's like all different, you know, I, we, there, I like, there, we don't have to be doing the same thing. Yeah. But we should exist in the same universe. Yeah. Sure. Be on the same threshold. There is a fine line between that, which I costume. agree with, and like Anthrax wearing matching shit on stage or something. You know, Shout you out like, Scott Ian. That's my no, boy. No, I'm, I'm, it's an example. I they used you to wear the pentagram, you know, like yeah. whatever. That was also the thing I was always so confused with because we've always gotten shit for that stuff. But I think we get shit selectively because literally I can point to almost like look at Slayer, look at Typo Negative, look at Anthax, look at Slipknot, look at Nine Inch. Name a band in the whole thing that anybody gives a fuck it's about. It's just the, it's you know the, I mean? uh, it's the. You guys. Yeah. You did I'll the same shit. shit. Oh, yeah, I'll gimmick up all and day. And them dude. other guys, when they left, they don't be doing the same shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like. It's some. It's an unspoken thing, but sure. I feel like it's part of it. So I don't. I don't. You know. Absolutely. You, you. I mean, it was always apparent that you. There was never a second in the in the history of your band that I was aware of where it seemed like you were like unsure, unsure yeah. of like where you were going. Mm-hmm. It always seemed like whatever was coming out, it was. You already step, had. You step, already had the next thing. Step four of yeah. ten. You know, like it was like, yeah, you're almost there, kind of a thing. That is kind of how I feel. I appreciate you saying that. I don't. It's hard to know what people it, p- per, like pick up on it as, but I do think about these things in advance always. I mean, sir, there was like you said, there was always synergy with what the album art was, the videos were. Uh, you were one of the first people, first bands I think I know who worked with Max Moore. Mm-hmm. And there you had was Pyro a, in your video. Yeah, a lot of yeah. a lot of Max stuff Moore. That. that was his uh, second video. His first ever video was his brother. His twin brother's yeah, yeah, band, right, his who twin. we toured with, yeah. our first U.S. tour. That's how we met him, and then he did our video, and he's done every one of our videos since. Wow. I think he did ours third, like after your one. That that's was awesome. that was the mind control video, and that's and he's a fucking probably on why. top of the world. Now. Yeah, he's great. He's man. like he's the so video talented. Guy. He's I just he's worked with good. him recently. He's so talented. Awesome. Man. Um, but so like, how does the how do do you guys have a fucking like? whiteboard somewhere where it's like all right by the end of this in five years hold on by the end of this in five years we're gonna make a website where people have to figure out clues (laughs) but first uh, joe's gonna shave his head you know what i mean like how does that it's not all so unnatural there's a lot of things that happen organically of course and everyone everyone has input on the direction it goes but 
Yeah, I don't even always cue everyone into everything because I think it stresses them out. Mm. So it's better, like, in terms of, again, we're kind of speaking without speaking, but in, in terms of, like, certain elements of it, it's not like everyone in the band always has to fully be, because you you don't want, you don't want it to feel contrived. And mm. I'm always taking in input from them, especially as we've gotten older, it's gotten so much better mm -hmm. to where it's being built around what everybody really wants to do. You know what I mean? Or like what they're telling me in our conversations. I try to find a roundabout way to get there for them as well. Mm. You know, when it comes to things aesthetically, you know, obviously music a is a different story, but I think the, I have in my room, I mean, on, on what we're doing now, I got four notebooks full. I got a picture board in my room. I got a whiteboard so, in my room. So yeah. Jesus Christ. But a lot of it's in my mm. head, but I write it all down and I keep things digitally and I keep things physically wow. so that if anything like happens I kind of have both yeah. I started doing that Smart. two records ago because I, 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 I got a, if my iPhone notes app goes away I got nothing I have a lot of notes as well yeah. you know but they'll just be things I'll just kind of watch other art as like almost research it's so a way to do it books movies TV. whenever writing I, I I have the first instinct to like stop listening to things so I don't get like too inspired and subconsciously take something and then I realized that like shutting myself off from the art I'm trying to make is like the worst thing. Mm. Like mm. you need to be constantly consuming. It's a hard balance, man, because fire. sometimes it can be really hurtful. Can so it like how dare yeah. you write that riff before me? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of man. There's so much like weird synergy in the air with things, and and what I really try to do is like I try to pull things together from opposite ends of the spectrum so that. I feel pretty confident that the amalgamation we're gonna make or like our composite will be have its own corner. Mm -hmm. So that even if there's other things that end up coming out that are similar, it will be it'll have a place on its own because there's no way somebody's putting this together yeah, with yeah. that. That's, that's true. That's always that's kind of always been the way that I've thought about it. What is it. what is the most out there off the wall thing you've pulled inspiration from musically? Damn, that's a good question. I don't know. I can I, tell I, you mine I, off the rip. Tell me. Dude. Barry White. <laughs> nice. Love it. That's great. Yeah. I have heard you say that. It's a real thing. You could get something from Note anything. for note, dude. <laughs> into, a, into a hard you, pit. I'll part. be watching movies in the theater and I will walk out and go into the bathroom and write shit yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. I do it, man. You do that too? The, the, His voice memo app is his crit, it's dude, a the, war The zone. six feet deep bridge is Batman versus Superman score. Dude, I got fucking buried after we watched Batman and Superman. Why? Because I said the fights were pretty good. The movie's awesome. Okay. Movie's awesome. The ultimate cut. I'm gonna brother shake is you. Is awesome. I'm gonna brother shake you because I don't agree. The movie's awesome. But I'll say this. <laughs> movie's the good. fight is fire. And I remember being in the parking lot with my boys and I was like, well, Batman and Superman fought. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> we haven't seen that. And they were like, what the fuck no, are the, you talking about? The, I was like, they fought in it. The theatrical cut is not great, but the ultimate cut, the three-hour version, is it great. looks better than The Flash. I just saw oh The Flash. Oh, my tell God. You what. what were they doing, dude? Fucking hell. It's, it's Shade could have made it. So, I mean, Shade might as well have made it. I wish the, he did. He might as well have made The Flash, man. Jesus it's gonna look, The Flash looks like what's on the screen behind us tonight. 100%. It's just oh, video it? game guys. Okay. So, I mean, I like King comes out. <laughs> um, one thing that I've actually always wanted to ask you was and something that i don't know of any other band especially in our world <laughs> our world doing is switching lineups mm -hmm. switching around moving around mm -hmm. we'll get to the later one the more recent one but at that time that was like kind of wild to put goldman in the center mm -hmm. all right who isn't singing who's just spin kicking like a motherfucker yeah. shade was still playing guitar fully and Reba singing and playing guitar and you still singing playing drums like was that just a, a like we got to do something different was it something that was like did Reba feel like stepping aside did, did it make more just more sense stage logistically to have Joe in the middle well he had a certain kind of energy that we thought yeah. could bridge the gap between myself and the crowd so it was like we were trying to work in conjunction so you're as moving one forward it was like me it was like the three of us especially were one person you were sending him because i am the king. signal he no, was sending i don't know if it's because i am king. but but you know what i'm saying the, the like royal that eye. was the eye the royal like eye. Each, yeah each we person. are i yeah, yeah. We are yeah, yeah. Right. and that's what that's what we we were a unit. real real rasta type <laughs> mentality <laughs> but if just from a logistical perspective it was like we can't i can't connect 
with the crowd properly, I can talk and I'm writing the lyrics and I'm so that makes sense for me to do one thing, but he had a physical presence also yeah. at the time that I thought was like very odd, but also really unique. Very unique. And she had one as well, but it didn't f- so much suit in that spot. Mm. So we shuffled up, and then every time we go into a new thing, we're n- really never thinking, like, let's change the lineup again. Yeah. We're just like, okay, how do we get an inch closer to connecting the way that we want to connect based on like what the music is? How do we, how do we just tweak the ex- the whole thing a little more to, mm-hmm. to be better. Right. It's just always about trying to be better. Yeah that's, yeah, that's usually our mentality. And I don't think everyone in my band would think of it that way for sure. Mm-hmm. There's definitely different perspectives. But for me, it's like, what's the best thing? What's like, what's the void? Fill the void, whether it's in music or whether it's in our own internal performance. Yeah. How do we bridge that gap? Yeah, I love that. I love that. Did you ever think of the weirdest thing you've ever pulled inspiration from? I genuinely can't, brother. Think, give me It'll one, come dude. to you. Give me one wacky thing where you were like, I'm, I'm stealing that. I was walking around Home Depot, and, and you'll hear the song as our entrance music. I heard a nice little song playing as our entrance, so you'll see. Okay. This is a Running Man yeah. version of that. <laughs> um, how long did uh, touring on... I am King. Now, was the Twitching Tongues Code Orange tour that took over the world was that I am King? Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, and boy, let's talk about that. Good God, dude! Like we played the Chicago. Finally, show. both had crowds. First time ever. And I, it's we true. played the Chicago show, so I saw it. I saw a snapshot of that time period where everything kind of Venn diagrammed. You know, it's crazier how much bigger the shit is now, just in general. But yeah. at yeah. the time, yeah. like even yeah. what we were doing, it was like. I felt like even the promoters were like, I can't believe there's people here. I know. We're just like overall. Rooms. We're filling crazy. up rooms. Yeah. yeah. Those we, rooms where there's actually people. Yeah. It was that, that, like, that was me witnessing, like, oh my God, this is there. Like, that was a co headline. You fucking killed it too, for though. No reason. Like, no, that no, was no, on no. that store for sure. You yeah. killed it too because we had a similar, the crowd had a synergy. It did. And there was lots of people that you were bringing in the door who maybe had heard that we were catching fire but really didn't know like what the deal was. Mm. So I felt, I didn't feel that way. I felt like, were we kind of hot at the time? Yeah. Big but time. But at the same time, your sets were always killer. But always I'm, killer. I'm just telling you, objectively, yeah. what I witnessed on that was like, I was like, I am watching the rise of fuck, the, ne- the great white shark, you know? Coming to eat the rest of the power. World. It's raw power. Could not believe it. And and the Thank record you. the record was so good that that it was like this record is so good. This tour it has to be good. That's awesome. And like still thinking about the pit parts on I Am King. Scary. Some of the <laughs> some of the best modern mosh parts ever. Written. I think we brought back also the which I'm not advocating I necessarily. I know you have a gimmick of it, but. We brought the violence back to the crowd. Yeah, like it. There was there was a period where people were ready for it, so it crescendoed at the right time. But uh-huh. for some reason, our band, I felt like I can tell you why. Yeah, <laughs> there's no front man. Yeah, that's part. That might be part of that. So it's like I part. have to go hard as fuck because I can't. You and at Court Orange and Nails, you cannot sing along to. You can only beat ass to. So it, it would get just crazy. Blew my mind. Yeah. There was a couple years there where it was it was borderline stressful. It was like every show was very was and people weren't so used to it as they are now. It's not like now where yeah. I walked to like me and my buddy Joe Sanderson from Eternal Sleep. I remember like four or five years ago or more. We were watching that band Lifeless and we were watching a guy go to the crowd and he was just punching people right in the face. And we were both like we were like that like even in Pittsburgh people mosh hard yeah. but yeah. they wouldn't I wouldn't just look you in the eyes and punch you yeah, in the right. face cuz that's called fighting. Yeah. So it would be a little <laughs> swagless. We were behavior. both like what's going on? But it had something that had crescendoed to where it was a little before that even and it goes in cycles of course it's been like that in the past yeah, yeah, yeah. but people there would be a lot of fights too there yeah. was a, it was there was just a lot of chaotic energy and then the funniest part is i feel like you pan to the stage and you look at who's up there yeah. and we're all wearing like rags <laughs> remember the rags era <laughs> We're wearing really Goodwill, good. like just anything. Goodwill, good like well. striped. Yeah, rags. yeah. Just like, and I'm just, I loved at the time. I loved that juxtaposition. I was like, I loved that. It was idea. cacophonous. It was visibly. It was. Cacophonous. It was also it was cool. the the moment of good dear friend Brody King beating oh, yeah. ass and becoming semi viral at the oh, time. Yeah. Um, with the the jerseys were happening. That yeah. was like the this is hardcore. That was your this is hardcore. Oh yeah, I walked those jerseys around to everybody, dude. Yeah, like again, and this is a very Pittsburgh thing. 
I remember on our first tour, my buddy who runs a venue, who's one of my kind of like old heads, he gave us our seat. He brought us in a corner. We were doing terrible. This before we knew anybody. And he gave us all the CDs and he was like, you're going to go up to every person in here and try to sell like homeless people and sell them the CDs. And until we sell every CD, we're not leaving. And we went and we sold every one of those CDs. Wow. And I would take that mentality. So like with the jerseys or with the, I would, we would just do stuff. We would lose money on that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm going to get these fucking jerseys on everybody because then when we, when we do this shit, it'll be a thing. And yeah. it was. And, and then it was a thing. And we would utilize that mentality in different ways, you know, because it wasn't, there was natural movement, but no one was coming to pick us up from Pittsburgh and get us over. Right. We, we, we had to get ourselves over. You know what I mean? Yeah. Had to. It was I, do I, or die. And you did. I really Thank think you. you are the example of that because even, you know, love you as I do, you're from a place where if a band gets made, people are going to watch. Yeah, yeah. You and know. his brother was in a band that was popping as well. But and, it's a, yeah, but, yeah. But, but at the but same he time, made his own, he made his own kingdom I'm as well. Not, don't take that. You know how long it took us. Of course, of course, home I home was last. But there to are, catch on. But I mean, there are a lot of bands. LA, yeah. There's there's a, there's seven shows a night. You know, you yeah. gotta you gotta compete constantly. Yeah. But yes, absolutely. But we being pop- from oh, from Pittsburgh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's tough. It's very tough. Tough. Um, you did it. When that was all going on, were you already planning for forever? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it was sick. I was going by the time it came out. I mean, by you already had the red color scheme. Oh yeah. I mean, down. I tweak it. It's not. I'm yeah. not. I'm not gonna be on. Some That's true. Ego I shit. I tweak the fuck out of it. I don't have like. I'm not sure that this is the thing. It's like I have the pieces. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I utilize the tools around me and my bandmates 100 percent in every way. People around me, friends. I remember some alternate album titles that I'm. Yeah. Exactly. You know. So I mean, there's I put things and I'm not always right and I'm a lot of times not right but I I try to I have the pieces I can see the idea right and that's some that's something you know I don't have the finished product always but that one was an easier one to figure out the second one because you kind of knew what worked I like that you call it the second one. Yeah. The th- or the third no, no. one. That's the prequels no, yeah. to me. I agree. As, that's episode one, two, and dude, three. That's the, the old shit. Yeah, exactly. We're the exactly. same yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, where yeah. this reality approaches is the prequel. I changed the name for that reason. Yeah. It wasn't even because necessarily the kids element. That factored in, but it was more so like... Different band. Different art style. Yeah. That was really the primary thing. I was like, we need to do a different art style and... I figured, which we have done and are continuing to do, we would bring some of the things from the early stuff back around eventually. Mm-hmm. It was like with the first one, I thought we'll mm-hmm. rebuild the house real basic and we'll build the foundation and put the dirt in and, and start to build it so then we can go back and rope them back into what Smart. we were doing before. Um, you know what I mean? It, not that I didn't love that shit. I did, but it was like simple, a little bit more, a little bit more. That's been the plan. And mm-hmm. it works sometimes. It doesn't work sometimes. But, you know... We had to rebuild the house. It had come to as it was going as far as it was gonna go. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that was the plan. Was bleeding on forever? Yeah. Oh yeah. So that was for me when I I like I love grunge and alternative stuff. Me too. I love Alice in Chains. When I heard that, it was a very exciting thing for me as like your friend. You know what I mean? Like regardless of music, I was like, oh shit, they did something like. Seriously, out of the they box. went from like writing an amazing hardcore album to writing like a famous rock song. Yeah, <laughs> not so famous, but you know. Oh come I, on, uh, depends on who you ask. I mean, it had to be the most played for a long time. If you ask right? Hunter Hearst Helmsley, he'd say it's a famous. Song. <laughs> hey, at the time, it's all about at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but I don't really think too many other people were doing that. No, so, no. You know, that's what. I don't know. And. <laughs> Grammy nominated. Pardon this interruption. We've got to stop and talk to you about some beautiful ads. First off, it is AG1 time. Woo! Did I, you take your greens today, brother? Oh, my God. Dude, I've been really consistent with my AG1. Yeah. And I've been eating not great lately since I got yeah. home. Uh, I feel so good. I take it every day. Every, every day, morning. dude. Every yeah. morning I start. I've been because it's so hot here. Mm. I've been starting with uh, AG1 liquid IV combo back to back. Dude, I feel incredible. Lately. Yeah, it, it, we've said it before. I don't know what I was missing, but it was something. It's in there. <laughs> it's, and it's you can get somewhere. it at athleticgreens.com slash hard lore. Uh, you get five free of those travel packs, which came so in Dude, handy yeah, while we were yeah, in I'm not flying without them. 
No. And uh, a year supply of the vitamin D drops. Yeah. AG1 is the goat. We love working with them. I really hope that we get to do it forever so that we can keep drinking it forever. Yeah. That's what the game was missing. It is also <laughs> Manscaped time, baby. Do you, you know scape your well. man lately? Uh, not today. A couple days ago. Dude, I dude. am scaped to the gills. You're scaped you up? What? I'm scaped up, dude. Oh. I love Manscaped. I, I, I've literally used like every product except for the beard stuff because I don't have yeah, a beard. Yeah. But man, that body scrubber, I'm telling you. Body scrubber is unbelievable. The uh, body wash is like my daily driver, dude. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly how I treat it. I have my my fancy body wash and then my daily driver. My daily driver. Exactly um, and and smells honestly, great. the Manscaped one smells. I get a lot of compliments on the Manscaped Same. one. And then when guys are <laughs> my thing at the gym <laughs> and, and, where, and whatnot, <laughs> when, when some guy is... Is my thing. <laughs> He's always like, dude, this smells so good. What is that? And I go, that's the Manscaped Crop Reviver, brother. Check it oh. out. <laughs> Christ. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I love that. I use code the Hard Lore. <laughs> preserver and the Reviver every day. Code Hard Lore for 20% off plus free shipping. Manscaped. Uh, it's whatnot time, baby. Oh, our triumphant return. Triumphant Coming return. Out. Should we do it while you're here together? Yeah, that, exactly. I'm, I'm bringing oh. my stuff. Oh, dude. Well, yeah. Hordlar is back on whatnot next week. Pew, 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 the pew. best place to buy and sell new and used hardcore memorabilia. We're on there. Brody King's on there. Dan Housen's on there. Le Lars Fredrickson's on there. You can get so much stuff there. Post Malone is done doing stuff on there. So much stuff. So much um, stuff for you. So much stuff for you. So much stuff for me. I We're going to get the coolest stuff. We're going to sell some really cool stuff next week. Mm -hmm. And it's a live Hardlore episode that airs one time. Yeah, you never get to see it. You just get to participate. So don't miss it, man. Don't also, it. our buddies at a uh, little band called Slipknot, oh. you, ever heard, you ever heard of it? Wanted yeah. us to let you know that they're live at Madison Square Garden. Exclusive vinyl variants are available now. Uh, on February 5th, 2009, Slipknot headlined the world's greatest arena, Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. And on August 18th, next month, 818, baby. What? The concert will be made available for the first time on a 2LP with exclusive packaging and colorways to celebrate the 15th anniversary of All Hope is Gone. Check it out Very now nice. at the link in our description. Very nice. And since this is a Code Orange episode, yeah. and this episode is coming out the day after their record is getting announced, I figured we'd stop and tell you about it because it's available. They didn't even ask me to do this, so I'm just... No, we're, they're just buds. We're really nice guys. Uh, the <laughs> record is called <gasps> the above and it's available september 29th on blue great music you familiar with that date bo that's fucking yeah uh, yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm familiar with that with that date uh for anybody who missed it the harm's way record uh common suffering is coming out the very same day so. huge day for aggressive rock music mm -hmm. back to this episode first grammy nomination yeah Not forever yeah tell me about that day I was happy. That's one of the few days of my life I've been happy. <laughs> <laughs> and today, of course. Today is right not, now is at not this moment. No, I love good. doing this with you. Good, dude. No, but uh, yeah, I was happy. I was like, okay, box you, box checked. Who, Something you, achievement unlocked. I'm sorry. Did you record forever with Will? No. What happened that was, was we recorded the true story, and he'll he's he'll be down with this. Is you know we recorded it with Kurt Ballou. Uh, I didn't right. properly communicate to him as we were doing it, what it was really going to be in the end. Mm -hmm. So we did the band. We get to the end of that, and I'm like, brother, there's a whole another half of shit yeah. we're going to have to chuck on this thing. And oh. he was like, what? Mm -hmm. And I was just like, he's like, we're out of time. He's like, I got to wipe the physical board for the next band coming in. And I was like, pause. So don't. So me <laughs> and Shade and, I uh, know, maybe me and Joe, actually, I called Will, who I had met through doing our Adventures album. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, dude, if we drive to Philly right now, it was like the middle of the night, could we make something that's like a template that we'll send to Kurt that then he can copy the mix off of in terms of the leveling of everything? Mm -hmm. Oh. And Will was my brother, was like 100%. He's the man. Drove there in the middle of the night, did that, <sighs> sent oh it to him. God. He put it together. And then he was like, I'm wiping it off the board. It's done. We we're like, all right, sorry. Actually, we Reba had to ask him. Because uh, he said no to me. Yeah. 
Reba went in for the, the, the soft. Come on. The puppy dog Come eyes. So went in like a soldier. Wow, unbelievable. And then, uh, but that wasn't his fault. It was just, I wasn't good yet. I actually think what we're doing now, I'm a lot better at it. Like communicating the ideas to the people who are going to be helping do them mm-hmm. instead of just like as we go kind of. And then, we'll and then yeah. we'll do this. And then we'll do this. We'll do this. So, like, you, you had a rocket attached to the band from I Am King. What was touring on the follow up, which is really hard to do? A follow up that's successful but is it was very. A, fi- a follow up that was high, way more, more successful, successful yeah, right? Yeah. Amazing. So, what was that like? What was touring on that like? What were the changes you were seeing? It was good and bad. The stuff we did by ourselves was awesome. We dipped our toes into like the support world, and we had a couple that were just really hard because we were first playing to nobody. Yeah, and it was tough. Door, doors at people six don't thirty people set at six. Do not realize that, that when you get on some of the bigger tours, not naming <laughs> names, sometimes you're playing when doors open. Yeah. That's what we did on one of those tours. We played when the doors open, so we would play sometimes to five or ten people. Jesus so Christ. it just gets your mind going in a certain way. And we had some great shows. What's really interesting about that period is like we did that run, and then me again being like thinking forward, I was like, okay, we need to make the next one. And so we really buckled down early, probably Jesus really Christ. earlier than we should have. Mm-hmm. Because again, we did the Mayhem Fest where we were. There was a stage oh, of. Right. There was a stage of Victory Records bands, and they, Victory had paid to put them on. So we played at 11 a.m. and everybody else played after us the whole tour. Oh so we God. would be, and it was a bus route tour. We were in a van, oh. we were sleeping in the van in the parking lot, oh. waking up playing to nobody, selling nothing. That one burnt us a bit. Yeah. Yeah. That was on I am towards the end of I am King actually. Oh, okay. Then you know we, get forever put some really cool mixed stuff together we had shows we did two forever tours one had like lifeless and then like nicole dollinger yeah, and like yeah, youth code yeah, and like laid to rest yeah. in vain when they first started yeah, yeah. and then one had twitching ghost man ghost was on with yeah. the phase so i was trying to like put those things mm-hmm. on that together. was awesome that, that was cool, cool right yeah. and so we did that and then yeah we were like all right time to go again get back in there and make make something classic and then we really put our nose to the grindstone and we were ready to just come out with it and then covid so we took like yeah, oh like, my yeah, we got to talk about truly. that please that was underneath right yeah, that's the third one okay i think you guys are like the biggest victims <laughs> of the pandemic like oh, like um, as a matter of fact 100 percent factual like the way i know firsthand i've seen yeah what you put it into an album personally and as a band mm-hmm. and to have like I can't think of a band who had more taken away from them because there were others at the time I remember Knocked Loose had put out a record but they got to tour yeah Acacia Strain had put out a new record a lot of bands they got to thing. tour like a lot were like lucky um, and March thirteenth, baby. Yeah, oh. yeah. The day the world shut down. Want to know why? I go. It's got to come out on Friday the thirteenth. Because the last one came out on Friday the 13th. And then we got Friday the 13th to fuck. You really and I will never put out an album on Friday the 13th again. So the so the plan was to have a hometown record release show. Mm-hmm. What, what was the cap of that venue? 1,200. 1,200 people. Hometown show. Yeah. The most stressful. Yeah, because yeah. if those don't sell. Oh, my God. It's the worst. We sold that fucking thing out. Yeah. I, I, and, I, and believe me, I know that that felt good. So... What what is the time like? How quick did you have to pivot from a, live stream a normal show to a, one of the coolest? Oh my god! Things you, you pioneered the live stream era of music. Kind of made what we're I doing. I don't know. Happen, we, yeah. if we you really. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you guys saying that. All that. It stuff. got me into Twitch. Which got Remember well. That. I was already into hey, Twitch. Hey, you but helped it, like, us got with that. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank of you, course. Man. But then it kind of you know. He helped like, me do- with that. Domino and effects then I got us to here. Him to do this. I can name yeah. some other domino effects as well <laughs> I'm sure. that are even more interesting. Where it's not like hatership, and I'm just like, wow, I genuinely feel like. But that's life. But there's yeah. some stuff where I'm like, if we didn't do that, like well, this big thing that I know, I know would never have happened. Right. Because of that. That's why but I bit but my. That's just life. That's why I bit my tongue about bleeding in the blur. Dude, there's all kinds of shit. uh, I mean, that's what I I can't. This is the thing about me that's been I've had to learn. It's like I can't want deeply to innovate and then also always be mad that we did because innovating creates doors for other people. Yeah. And I do feel like we've 
I feel like we've been able to create doors for other people for sure. I don't think anybody can deny that. Uh, Thank you. I and there's that times where that can be really frustrating because when you're in a band like mine, or he can relate to this too, there's been good periods for us. We did sell that show out, mm-hmm. but we've struggled the whole time. Oh, we whole time. always struggled for every ticket, every sale. We never had a tour. The tour sold out. Yeah, like, yeah. Or the record selling crazy. It was like, okay, it did pretty good. Like, yeah. How do we get to the next thing? It's yeah. always a lily pad. We've never had one single solid. The biggest jump we ever had was from zero to 200. I am king. <laughs> there, every other jump has been a stitch by stitch by mm-hmm. stitch. Right. And so we're kind of exposed in that way. You know what I mean? Like people... It can be difficult, but what was your what were the fuck March thirteenth? You, you find out that no one can physically come to the show. Yeah, your hometown sold out record release show for the fourth but third record. How quickly do you have to go from normal show to calling Sonny, getting the live stream shit figured out? Uh, called Sonny that yeah. day. Yeah. Three like days. that days. morning, two, two days. days, yeah, two like, days. Because I was holding on to hope the show was going to happen. Yeah, and me and Andy from every time I die was supporting us, which is a really big thing at the time. And they, oh, yeah. you know, they were still probably more popular than us, but they were doing it, doing some, the job, some brother shit. You know? Yeah, yeah. And so Andy and me were trying to, well, maybe we could do it outside. We were still trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. When that died, I was like, all right. So let me think. And I was talking to my mom, and my mom was like, you need to do something that you film, like. And I was like, Mom, you don't know how this shit works. I'm like, Wait That's impossible. <laughs> and then I hung up and I was like, and I called Sonny. And he was the first person I called. And I said, could this be possible? He said, yeah. I called the label. Love the label. But they were just like, I don't fucking know. Yeah, but I was luck. like, if yeah. it can, is there anything you can could do? Could we to have help? some money? A little bit. But yeah. not there, but, but not really. Yeah. Not really. Yeah, yeah. So called the local promoter. Um, Reba started calling people. I remember we were all at practice. We sat outside. I remember it, the same practice space. And we all split off on our phones and started calling people. And then Shade had made this, sorry, Shade had made this whole visual show for the tour because we were going to have screens for the tour. Oh. And so we were like, okay, like that's the key. We need to find like somebody who can cut that stuff into the show. Yep. And then I brought the idea of like, and then the kicker is we show the empty arena. We do it like mm. wrestling because yeah. I'm a I'm I'm a big wrestling fan, mm-hmm. the OG to yeah. be honest. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. But uh, you know I've been there. I saw Jericho debut, so I wonder. <laughs> you were like ten. It's fine. I'll, yeah, but he was. I'll fly, my they were flying to WrestleMania and shit when they were little. I seen the, <laughs> yeah. the picture with you and AJ Lee. Dude, do you have a pic? There's a picture of me in front of a wall mural of Bray Wyatt. And it's me, Reba, and Joe. We we're just big fans, and we were like had the shittiest seats, and we we're just outside. Took a picture in front of the wall. That was the closest we were getting to the whole thing. Unbelievable. <laughs> and I still have that picture. But full re- circle. Regardless, yeah. so we thought empty arena match style. We'll do it. And then I, I was like, I'm gonna cut a promo. And we'll show the crowd. That was the part I was excited about. Yeah, that's how I am. And uh, I, w- I was yeah. watching it at Harm's Way practice. That's awesome. I was yeah. literally watching your stream because we were writing for the next record and then we stopped because of COVID because yeah. we nobody knew what the fuck we, you know uh, no actually it was for pra- it was practice for Europe we were going to Europe that rules and it got canned that same you know time period that well, was such yeah. a crazy yeah it was cool man I'm really pleased with how I was really we. it was our people all pulled it together too our squad of people I, I couldn't believe you pulled Unbelievable. it off and especially like getting for those of you who don't know getting money out of labels is Almost as Impossible. difficult as getting a fucking all access pass of this shit, but oh, it is it is hard. It is impossible. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just doesn't. We happen. didn't get and and well, one that leads to the A and R guy who signed us and helped us with a lot of that stuff. Though we didn't really spend a lot of money doing that, to be honest, because a lot of it was, su- you know, some of it fed back into the show and it was the tour, right? But but and that guy. That's why I'm still with that guy, and like as he left Roadrunner and started the thing we're on now. Who yeah, I left right with yeah, him. Yeah. We're the only band who left right with him. I mean, that shit because matters, you know? I w- loyalty. Yeah. I have a funny anecdote you know? about him. I saw him at is the. He here? Is he here? Yeah. I saw him at the Turnstile Grammy thing, and I heard. I, I was looking at him, and I was like, oh, that's the guy that signed Code Orange. And I hear, as I'm passing by, you know, I signed Code Orange. <laughs> <laughs> Again, <laughs> I think that's what he was talking about. He signed us, Turnstile, Gojira, Trivium. He was Slipknot's guy. He signed. He signed. Oh, he's a legend. Yeah. He's a legend, and and not just that. He was there for us. Yeah. And so we're this is we're getting a little dirt sheet with all of it, but this is you know the guy with us at Roadrunner. We're now on a new label called Blue Great Music. 
he went and started that label with the founder of Roadrunner Records, a guy named Case Wessels, who also owned Blue Great Merch. When are the shirts coming back? We're working on it. That's sick. I got some. I might have some blanks I can donate for measurements' sake. We're doing it right. All right. And I've been really trying to be adamant. Cool. And I think that you should be involved for sure in Let some way know, because yeah. you, you're Hard you're a group. big time. You brought all that shit back. That's, that's true. A fact. That's that, an. That, that's that, a, that, I mean, that can be traced. That, that is know? a fact. It's a fact. I 100. percent So, out for blood. Well, I want to talk about WWE stuff. Bro. Oh yeah, please. That please, was absolutely. that was in between out for blood, right? Working with Bray. We did one before first during one. forever. Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah. You did, and then the first we did one. one recently, and we played on WWE twice. Yeah, one bleeding was NXT Brooklyn, and then we did underneath. That was the, another day where I just okay. teared up. <laughs> yeah. You know, was that the one with Alistair at the time? Yes, yes, and Brennan from Incendiary. Right, my brother. I remember yes. that guy. And then you did the Fiend. Yeah, intro. Yeah. Right, yeah. that's what it's called. The original whatever, whatever the ori- it's his called, theme. It's, it's his I, theme. I had a name for it that they, I just think, deleted. Yeah. So I don't know. And we had art for it that they certainly deleted. Yeah. And we got a cartoon scratch drawing as that was sitting on our Spotify. Oh, you, know you me. hated that, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every day I was like, just, just, I'd rather give it the song away than have to look at yeah. it anymore. And then they took it down, right? I didn't ask for that, but they did. Interesting. Yeah. What was, I mean, let's, let's talk that full circle. Together? Yeah. Like, what was that like? I messaged them. Really? He followed us. I messaged him and I just said, we're the ones. I knew he was off TV because I I have, you know, I've followed that stuff pretty deeply like my entire life essentially. Yeah. So I knew he was off TV. I knew he would be repackaging for sure. Mm-hmm. Like it just made sense. Yeah. Um, just listening to Meltzer and shit. Mm-hmm. And so then I fucking used my Meltzer knowledge, <laughs> me- messaged him and was like, we're the ones, brother. And he said, oh, well, I'm talking to X, Y, Z, but like, if that doesn't really work out, like, I love your guys' shit. And I was like, we no. the, we the ones. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So, and <laughs> we then the we got in there, you know, and we yeah. just went and recorded it gorilla style, both of them. Yeah. Oh, went, really? Both songs you recorded with no permission. Wow. Oh. And with no budget for free. Fuck. Will yeah. Yip recorded that one for free. Yeah. Tell me, tell me. Who's also it, a wrestling guy. I just called him. I was yeah. like, dude. Yeah. Actually, we did a lot of it on the computer, and he did the drums. He plays the drums on the song. Right. Right. So, yeah. Good drummer. Crazy yeah. drummer. <laughs> so the man's a savant. <laughs> yeah. Secret weapon. Um, yeah, that's that's outstanding. What was you opened uh, the door for me? I would say. To what? For, for wrestling themes, dude. Oh, themes. Yeah. Now I love that you're doing themes, man. That's fun. I'm, I'm very proud of you. What was that. It's what killer. was Hunter like? Oh, dude. God. Yeah. yeah. Just I mean, straight up. I right? have pictures of me and Hunter in the ring. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I crazy. used to stand in line and meet Hornswoggle. <laughs> <laughs> I have stood in line and paid $150 to meet Hornswoggle. $150 to get to Swoggle? Access. Wow. You ever been to Access? It ain't cheap. Woo! Wow. And I've stood in front of pictures of these people. I, I never went to a wrestling show closer than like the 200s until... I was doing it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like I he went, just looked me dead in the eye and said, "Hornswoggle." Well, I waited me to up. meet these people. I would like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, no. I, so yeah. it's the, I say that to say, I took in every moment of it. But I've met him like four or five times now. Is it crazy every <laughs> time? The first time was awesome because he we were at this practice space practicing, waiting for him, and he fucking shows up and watch us practice, and he's. Just oh. like, and my, my best friend Tyler who has a band called Pain Clinic from Pittsburgh check him out he's really the OG of this wrestling yeah. shit everybody you hear even including my brothers right here using the lingo they don't know but it can't he was using the lingo and, and it spread like wildfire to me <laughs> which spread like wildfire to everybody now we all use it and some we got even wrestlers literally wrestlers in yeah. the fucking gym yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's beautiful but I want to give him a shout out so I brought him I called him the day before dude you got to get down here right now yeah. he like called off work and he's just like standing behind Triple H like you know trying to like smell him or, or whatever <laughs> and, he just, and he hears the guy go to Triple H and go oh and he, we could change anything you need to want and H just goes he says it's fucking perfect. It's fucking perfect. And he's rocking out, and he's rocking out. And I literally, I was like, "Oh, dude, fuck. that that's fucking crazy." And then we got to go to him in your house, no fans, so we're just hanging with him the whole fucking yeah. time. Yeah, wow. and he's saying to Goldman, "Do this," and Goldman's like, "Fuck yeah!" And he like does it on the camera. <laughs> and he oh said, yeah, He yeah, called yeah. Goldman. He's like, "You kind of look like Brock." He said that to Goldman. We've been saying that for years. Triple H <laughs> said that. Wow. wow. So we. 
we it was a dream. And then I sat in the ring with him, and my friends were like TMZing the picks and like, <laughs> getting all the secret yeah. picks. And he told me about how to get, keep my hair wet during the set. What is it? Which is. Now Just do everyone's going to do it. Here's what it is. It's called the worker spray. You get a little bottle. I've you seen... put water. You put baby oil. Yeah, baby then oil. Then you get the leave-in conditioner. So you water baby oil, leave-in conditioner, and it will stay wet. And, and that was I had one chance to ask one question. And I said, Hunter, how do you keep it wet? Because you're you're doing 40-minute broadways. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's how people don't know. So I was a water bottle. Water, man. yeah. And living the wrong dude, lifestyle. It's six minutes in, it just goes. Yeah, it just dry because you, dude. Yeah, I, yeah. I actually read a, a Reddit. Ask me anything with Seth Roll or with Seth Rollins, and someone asked, "How does Roman keep his hair wet?" And all Rollins said was, "Bottle of water." So oh. work. <laughs> well, I'll I'll do some. No, no, no. I believe I'll you. I'll do some I, funny bleeps. I'm over, so over, yeah, yeah, over yeah, the, yeah, the bleeps. The bleeps will be good. We'll keep Ro it. Roman can do whatever he wants to do. Of and course. if the water the water might work for him because God's looking. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 God yeah. says you He's, go ahead and you stay we, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, We've yeah. said it on the show before that Samoans are actual gods on this earth. Yeah. Dude, he's got that beautiful but H I knew was putting shit in there and I just had to find out and he told me, man. And ever since then I have my spray bottle right over there. That's so sick. Me Max, we all call it, me Max and Dom, we all say we're wet guys. Cuz there's a lot of dry guys I'm on stage. I'm a definite wet guy, but oh. I was always water bottle. If you're dry, oh, wet guy. If dry, you're not, a you're you not like, on top. I'm sopping. You look wet, like dude. Marv getting yeah. electrocuted. One hundred percent up. Dry guys to me, I'm disgusted. Yeah, no, I, I see you go up there dry. Like you need to be wet before you get up. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm wet first, now. First person. I'm wet right saw, now for yeah, the interview. Yeah, yeah. First person I ever, yeah. I ever saw do that was Human Furnace, and I was so young. I was like, "What the fuck is this like metal? Sh Why is his hair wet?" <laughs> yeah, I didn't get it. Oh man, that. But now I do. I took many years to figure it out, but. Yeah, I don't know how we got to the spray, but... Okay, so big jump then. Mm -hmm. I would say thematically and aesthetically from Forever to Out for Blood. To Underneath. We had uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Underneath. See, I, I disagree. On. I disagree. When I... So the, sh the, like, the shock and awe for Out for Blood, mm -hmm. to me, didn't make sense. Because uh, I felt like it was a natural continuation of Underneath. I didn't say yeah. musically. Oh, thank you. Oh, aesthetically, oh, aesthetically. Oh, but no, yeah, but but sure. but to his point, most people would say what you just said is true. Like most people feel that it's a that's a really strange jump. And that's the thing. And I no, don't no, I don't yeah. get that. No, no, that that song could have been on that record. Totally, that song, yeah. For it's just a it's a it's yeah. a. Uh, I guess I give people one if you don't like the song, just for I completely get that respect. But what I'm saying is. I guess because of what we talked about earlier, we talked about having a whiteboard and a photo board and notebooks. I see everything as one big thing on one big wall. Mm -hmm. So when we did that song, to me, I, I felt like, well, this is clearly people are going to understand this is one thing we do. And it's take we took that one thing up a notch and we're even aesthetically, we're taking a certain thing to the end of its road. Right. Even the lyrics our tongue in cheek not in saying that I don't love the song I love the song mm -hmm. but it's almost goading it's like you know what you want to do yeah. you know mm. cut our throat you know what I mean mm. so that was you know a miscalculation in this way nobody understood that at all they will but I, lo yeah. I love the song dude when we play the song live it fucking dude, goes insane that's what I'm saying when, when I saw it yeah. I, it was the craziest thing at Aftershock it was insane we just don't have currently the platform for it sure. so our shit was still going out to the same fish bubble and that bubble does not want to hear it that bubble they truly don't want to hear it that you know bubble I mean? the, we're in this weird age where the, the bubble we're talking about Here's a thing that they don't directly relate to, and they go, "Okay, fuck everything they've ever done that I loved yeah, an hour yeah, ago." Yeah, that's that's that. Yeah, we definitely got some of that, but again, I think we we're kind of built for it because behind the scenes and in front of the cam, both ways, we've been having dealing with this shit forever. It's true. Course. There ain't been a year in my life I wasn't dealing with this shit. <laughs> some of it's my fault. Some of it's not. Some of it's this that, but. When that happened, it just feels like, oh, this is just my life. This is just yeah. what always happens. Like, not in a positive way, but I wasn't like, I wasn't crushed. I was hurt because I felt, I thought, man, I felt like we had given these people enough art mm -hmm. that they could see that and understand like where it fit in sure. and be supportive because I see other things that to me are so much softer, mm -hmm. so much weaker, 
so much more process, mm-hmm. so much more underthought that everyone's fine with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not only are they fine with, they're doing front flips off the stage to it this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. But so it confuses me. But mm-hmm. it's also I've always been like not I don't think I'm fully in touch with that, whatever that thing is. Mm-hmm. You know, I that kind of, changes every day. Yeah. Right? And, and I'm just I follow my compass and we did out for blood because we knew what we're going to do now. We knew what we would do in between, and we had a, there was a plan. And it's but at the same time, if you don't like the song, I 100% respect that. But we were pulling like to our thoughts on the song. We're like, we love fucking Dragula. We Fuck love yeah. fucking Walk. Even yeah. we want just like an ass beater, like anthemic to a point, yeah. upbeat song that yeah. doesn't have like a Pounding pop punk anthem. chorus like a lot of this yeah, shit has yeah. that people mm. are cool with Yeah, because that's right. kind of the sound now that everyone's cool with right. to me that's disgusting so what <laughs> I all agreed so what I thought what we had done I was like we walked the right line like this and then you know it's okay it happens this coincides with another lineup change a big one where you come from behind the kit I mean it had already happened I but, did that for underneath but we underneath, skipped yeah. it is what I'm saying for so sure. along uh, in this period I'm gonna lump the two together just for conversation's sake you come from behind the kit Shade is full on Keeman Keeman uh, Dom had been joined for oh a my man yeah. yeah that's my boy that's um, my best friend so it's a major I would say that's a major change yeah I stepped up step up front you stepped up well the record we made, so we played some shows over here supporting bands and they didn't go well and we were like, why? Like, the music makes sense. And I knew that for that fan, it was the right music. Mm-hmm. But we couldn't connect. And we were too far away. And they just couldn't understand it. Wow. And so that factored into it. And then we started making, for instance, like, swallowing the rabbit hole. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, motherfucker, I can't drum this <laughs> barely. And I can't drum and sing it for sure. Yeah. And if I do, I can practice and get myself there, I believe. But the show's going to suck. Yeah. So then Shade was like, dude, step up. Let's go. This is what we do. Like, It was Shade's idea. He was like, let's shake it up. Like, It's time. And I was like, oh, God, I don't know how. Because I had done some guest one. spots and just done a really bad job. But then I figured it out. And as you'll see tonight, I genuinely feel... I can do it now. No, you're I, you're you're engaging. You seem like a natural. You're a front sure. man. Thank you. You were a behind the kit front man for a long time. Mm-hmm. And it took me a little bit. I feel like the period was brief when we first started doing it to connect to those things and to bring my personality back. But now I feel so myself up there. I or like at least the stage version of myself. I feel so like free. I just feel like I could it it feels so good, you know. Especially shows like how this one's going to be. It's really fun. That's mm-hmm. really good. New, we're at new album. Yeah. You got Max Portnoy on drums. Yeah. Drum royalty. Yeah. Mm. Is he dope? He's the greatest kid of all time. I would, <laughs> I would have never put greatest him in. Greatest kid of all time. That's a magnet on someone. So we had another kid who's a great kid. Shout out to him. But he just wasn't really... He was drowning. Okay. And he felt very... Um, I could tell he was really stressed out. And he wanted to stick in there for us. Mm-hmm. He's a good kid. Mm-hmm. But I gave him the door. I was like, brother, it's all right. Mm-hmm. Because we were practicing a lot. And we're taking it really serious, and it was it's life or death to me. So that life is not for everybody. He was like, mm-hmm. dude. He was like eating McDonald's once a day, just smoking like a pack of cigs, and he was just like, ah. I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But again, I love the kid. He's awesome, and he's a killer drummer. Great drummer. Oh, Bert, my bad. So then, uh, called Max and uh, got the names from Jay Weinberg from Slipknot, my good Legend. friend. And Max, another reason the show. Thanks, Jay. Is, thank you, Jay. <laughs> helped us out a lot in many ways, and uh, he's the fucking greatest. I we put him in a mask to give him some test and see how it went. You know, give him a little test. Sure. See how it cut. Didn't want to put him in a weird position. Yeah. Didn't want to put ourselves in an exposed position. Mm-hmm. And now he's free. So. I like that. The mud man is yeah. free. He's born. And I know there's some like deep lore in there yeah. for you for why you do that. Nobody cares. <laughs> All right, well, tell us about your new record. We're still working on When's this coming out? Whenever you want. Yeah. Could come out next week, come out in two weeks. Let's let's promote the new album. Let's say it's yeah. it's it's coming out. It's an out announced soon. album that has not been announced at this time that will be announced in a couple weeks with a video and, and Oh, perfect. Um, what we've done thus far is we put out two songs um, that are kind of like some red meat shit to get over here and rock uh, and kind of show a little bit of the underbelly of what it is we're doing. Not again. <laughs> um, and we're going to really start to roll out the vision and the full v- 
vibe of it. Mm. There's always a plan, you know. So, moving on to the next chapter. So, are you? So that being said, are you already thinking about what's next? We got a whole plan to do. There's a lot coming from us. I mean, we've been working on the same shit for three and a half years or so. So we got a, we got. Did writing for this was during COVID? Yes. Wow. We started what we're doing a, after the third live stream. And really? All the way till now. Okay. Till till we put it out. You've been cooking since 2020. Wow. 2021. Wow. And yeah, we we've, we've maybe made some mistakes in terms of we've been on the shelf a lot because of that. Sure. Because I guess the art element to me is really important, and sometimes it's like maybe that's not that important anymore in general. I At least agree, but... there, it is important in music. I don't know if in heavy music necessarily yeah. people really care. They just want some shit. But I do it the way I do it. I'm going out on my fucking shield, and that's it. We do it the way we do it. Love it. What are your thoughts on album sequencing? I mean, it's everything. I live and die for. Yeah. It. <laughs> Interesting. I'd because rather... there's a whole school of thought now that I'm sure you and Will have talked about. Where it people listen and digest music with playlists so much mm -hmm. that you gotta front load the, it, the A side, that you have to front load the A side, or that it doesn't matter at all. We don't, you can obviously do it for the vinyl, that matters forever, but m very few people consume music with vinyl. Mm -hmm. We don't do what people do, yeah, any which way, never have, never will. Mm -hmm. So, when there's a plan, we carry the plan out for better. Or for worse. <laughs> and we go first. They'll cut a promo on me right now, man. We go first. <laughs> and, 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 you and, really do. And everybody, you know. I remember when uh, Russ came out before Disharmony. You were like, brother, always go first. Because <laughs> <laughs> Russ killed, you know. I love that album. I like both those albums. I think Disharmony is a cool album, too. It's my least favorite one, but I really do <laughs> like it. I mean, just the hardest one, dude. Fucking, right? I think Dom wears the Disharmony shirt like every day. Is harder. You think so? Yeah. Does he really? I love okay, the Gaining sure. Purpose record a lot. And I want to say one other thing: when everyone was shitting on them, who was still rocking with them at the time? One hundred percent, JM and and BL. Really, just us. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> so I mean, fuck all y'all for that. Let's hit them with some. some let's, do some, let's do some. Let's do some generals. Let's do some so, fun. in terms of general questions, we ask one thing. I've been interested lately. I like to ask fellow Mosh scientists a few off top mm. favorite breakdowns of all time. Oh, you know what I've been listening to is I've been right now, so it's on my mind. Is I've been listening to E Town like nonstop, dude. Preach, brother. <laughs> brother, I'm <laughs> listening to the battle lines like every fucking day before the set. I usually have like a fucking. Dun, 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 dun. They're I mean, playing Pittsburgh soon. I saw. That's our thing. That's oh, so, duh, duh. We didn't even talk about yeah, that. So, about we, we put together a fest called Codes World, and the E Town thing came about. We put the fest together, and they just commented and said, "Can we play?" And so I hit up Ant, and we just texted. Duh. <laughs> I mean, he's literally the coolest guy. Hey, he's amazing. I texted. We figured it out like that. No agents or anything. We figured it out, which I try not to do as much because it gets me into yeah. into situations yeah, yeah. It's where it's always tricky. It gets me into situations often where like. I end up so confused how I'm the bad guy. Yeah. It's like I'm trying to I'm trying to do something for you, brother. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to screw you. Yeah, like, no. But then communication gets weird, so I trying to let our people do what they do now. One of my favorite bands, E Town Concrete. Yeah. <laughs> no hyperbole whatsoever. I mean that fucking record. Which one? I'm talking the Renaissance. Renaissance? Which I know You're it's a Renaissance not the, man? If you're not, then like it's, it's like as if it's the breakout. It's the uh, I would say it's the commercial success, dude. It fucking rocks. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it absolutely does. And I want to do the Josta part at our thing so bad. I'm gonna put that out there Just right do now. It. I'm doing the Josta part of <laughs> Battle Lines. We need somebody to step up in the El Nino part as well. I really like you know. So many nights uh, is their big ballad. I like that when they play it. He says this is the hardest song of all time, and then he's not wrong. No, he's not wrong. Let me shout out a local group that um for us like when we're kind of constructing those sort of parts like we pull probably from now at this point definitely from stuff more from our area or like per our purview there's a band called enemy mind who are like a uh i guess you'd call it beat down even though i don't like the way that word it's is not used. a real word yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the shit's so fucking hard and it is also technical but i mean it's it's the hardest shit of all time. So mm. if you're looking for like the kind of hard parts that I particularly like, there's different forms. But if we're going just full, 
fighting, mm-hmm. then that would be Mikey Neg just cited enemy mind as one of the them guys. The best. Wow. Them guys got put on all that, yeah, to some Pittsburgh shit. I think uh, Greenfield Mike sings on um, Gridiron song. There you go. So there you go. Yeah, that's those are I, good I answers. Yeah, those are good answers. There's so many. I mean, I, I yeah, love it all. Course. I love weird stuff. I love hard stuff. I love art stuff. I love rock music. I love hip hop. I like a lot of different things, you know. So try to mix it together. You're a big uh, Nine Inch Nails guy. Yeah. Has there been any conversing with Daddy Reznor? Nah, man, he doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, no, I know, but you never know. We have a uh, now. Nah, I'm a. I'm a giant. I'm a. I'm have a you ever hard. reached out in any way? No, because I feel one that's S A W F T soft, mm-hmm. and I don't want to necessarily be like, hey. Sir, like, please, Daddy. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, yeah. But at the same time, if he ever showed a lick of interest, yeah, I'd be at his front door. With but the roses. thing is, I'm like, like, have you heard the Halsey record that he produced? Uh huh. Dude, it's unbelievable. It's awesome. You don't even like Nine Inch. Nails. I barely like Nine Inch Nails, and I love that. Fucking so what? What I get record. from that? What I take from that is that you like. There's you like the kind of worlds they paint, but maybe you like. The art of like something like a like a Halsey or something more. What I can tell, I can tell, they kept the vocals, deleted everything, and just did wrote music under I it. And I that. love that. That's mm. such a cool way to do it. I agree. Me and Bo here, we would die for Rester. I know. I think he's a true. I think genius. he's an. I love his film scores. Yeah. Yeah. Love him. I mean, the Fragile is like probably my favorite at this point. My favorite record like of all time. I mean, I listen of all to time. It. It's up Huge. there. I mean, it, it, I you downwards. I used to be downward spiral. Guy to I like Downward yeah. Spiral, which rocks, and that's yeah. definitely more accessible. But most people would say that's the one. I'm sure. What's up? Hey, almost done. <laughs> Damn, man, it's, it's okay. kind of cool. It's very like it's very like you know celeb vibes. Everyone's <laughs> coming to the door. Yeah. So. No, but um, I fucking love Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. yeah, I mean they're my favorite band of all time. I, I mean they. Full I've stop. never heard a band sound better ever live. Sounds ever. so good. Got to work with Chris Verena on underneath, cool. um, who was the original drummer, programmer, keyboardist for Pretty Hate Machine and Downward Spiral. There you go. Gave us all the samples we have, the closer samples and shit. Or like oh, to just play with. Yeah. Not to do anything with. <laughs> but uh, just to, to fuck around with. Yeah. And um, they're from Pittsburgh area. Ah. So they're from like two hours from us. So Very cool. One of my best friends, Colin, like his dad grew up with different Colin from Eternal Sleep, yeah. Colin Bennington. Yeah. Grew up with, uh, you know, him and stuff so his dad so okay uh, well there's a camera she's fine hey Reba hey Reba (laughs) love you guys love you too ask him the golden uh before that the who do the the, the, the COA this is a very important question Colin of Arabia gave us this question because you've done a lot of guys I haven't seen him in a while he buried us the best on a on a picture before to the point where I cried laughing (laughs) Like years ago, <laughs> he's a pro barrier. Yeah, but then, yeah. But then awesome. he'll, but then he'll tell you in your face. He's like, "Hey, this is why you suck." And I'll no, be like, "I well, know, sir. He, you're he right." Al- <laughs> he always helped when we would play shows in Boston and stuff. He would always be supportive of us. Right. So That's I good. have nothing but respect for him. Mm-hmm. Full, full, full. He's the man. Mm-hmm. But um, it was a picture of me and Joe. Like we worked out with this girl, and she like posted like a picture, and it was like, and he's like, "Is this the before or the after?" <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I was like, God, he's funny. He so, gave us a question. Yeah. Called, who do you do? I thought for a second for me, I was like, oh, no. no yeah, no. Okay, just so in it's, general. So it's just like when you're on stage, when you're doing your thing, and I suppose from you, we should get two. We should get a drummer one and a singer one. Mm-hmm. Uh, f- I, I do like Porcel from Youth of Today and Hatfield oh, when I'm playing I'm, guitar. I'm stressed already. Yeah. He does. You can pick whoever. You can pick however many you want. Yeah, You've, you've done 50 guys. You tell from start me. to finish. Jimmy. I really think you are good at knowing things like that about other people. You know, I, I definitely see. Yeah, but there. you know, you li- tell me who I do. I don't tell know. Tell me, man. Don't be scared. Tell I don't me. know. Who do I do? As you a see man? me. You you know it. And if who it's nobody, that means I'm one of a kind. As a drummer, yeah, that's tougher because he had such a, a style. You know, with the singing <laughs> under oath, homie. Fucking hell. <laughs> Fucking hell. I had to give it to you. Brother, I don't me, know. Brother, me softly. I don't know. <laughs> so maybe you're one no of a kind. to him, but you I mean, tell me. I'm you not redheaded. You do when you're drumming. There's no one who you're like. I love this style. See, you guys start like what you pulled before you liked harder shit. I don't know. I don't know. Either. I don't know. Archers of Loaf, bro. 
I don't know what the fuck that I is. I love Archers of Love. I know you do, for a fact. We weren't pulling that on stage, okay. but we, we did cover the song yeah. for comp for the Toxic Breed Funhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Toxic Breed Funhouse? Yeah, bro? we talk about it all yeah. the time. R.I.P. Better well, times before before this shit was fucking mainstream. Am I right? Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> right or wrong? Agree. When this shit was real. Oh yeah. So you do, do you do? So you do Aaron Gillespie? Is that what you're saying? It's a mixture of Gillespie and um <laughs> trying to think. <laughs> Garth. <No. laughs> Drummer wise, I genuinely could not give you an answer. Singer wise, I definitely watch people and try to obviously do a little bit of trend stuff. I have a little bit of a trend there's stance. There's some trend. There's some fill. The because stand. there's not a lot of good stances, especially for my body size. And I found you that that kind of posed out stance that works for me. Yeah. Phil, I try to copy some Phil shit. Yeah. Um, I I watch a lot of. I mean, I'll just watch like when we're doing festivals, I'll just watch like all my favorite bands playing those old festivals. You know what I mean? Like yeah, the yeah. classic Dynamo. I mean, the oh fucking... yeah. And just pick stuff up to say, I've definitely literally did the fill line. Like I do it all the time. Don't just fucking stare at me. Don't you yeah. fucking stare yeah. at me. Right. You know the I mean? fucking Nine Inch Nails Woodstock set is That's a great possibly one. the greatest live set of all time. I actually watched a lot of their sets in the daytime to try to like make our daytime set better. To try mm. to like learn yeah. like, okay, what can we do? Like, that can translate this better, yeah. you know? So I try to watch, I don't, I try to sometimes watch bands at their not best best. Oh, interesting. To try to smart figure out, sense. just figure out like little avenues. Smart. I mean, I don't want to say just like the classic people, but, um, and then of course, like, I want to say there's like hardcore frontman, frontman that I've learned. I've learned tons from Scott Vogel. Um, okay. I've learned West. tons from, um, Everyone we've toured with. We we tour with Bane all the time. I would always learn from Bedard. I would learn from we tour with Madball, you learn from Freddie Madball. Tour with Converge, I would learn from Jake. Yeah, you know, yeah, there's you, sense. I learned a ton of stuff from you. Oh, one hundred percent. Learned many things from you. Um about many things, but about being a front man. Um, never learned a thing from James because he won't say a word to me after <laughs> after ten years because he hates me. Something about my aura he does not like. So any but a lot of other people, we we've learned you know, I learned shit all the time. Those I learned, were good. That was good. Name them, you know. Yeah, Josta. Yeah. Did shit with Josta. I'm watching. I'm learning. And then I try to... Fuck yeah, dude. I mean, I definitely learned a good headbang style from Phil where you can get less hurt, which is weird because he fucked his back up. Yeah, he... But where you back kind of... Back of his neck. Yeah. Face yeah. pose, and you use the fucking hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You go up and down. Yeah, yeah. And then it's less... You can get more out of that. It's full upper body. I full like upper the, body. I like the... Yeah, that's good. That one? Yeah. Oh yeah, I do a sure, lot of this. That's not a great. Yeah. I do a lot of this. That's and a good I, one. I also try to. <laughs> I try to do like. I try to use my. I have a strange body, you know, or not You're strange. Large. You're large. I'm, I'm long, long, lanky. Long. I'm tall. I'm, I'm 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 big. But you're beefy now. You're not as lanky as you oh, used yeah, to be. You filled right. out. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not this guy. But I'm no. I'm two in the 200 club. You know, I'm two. That's huge. Yeah, sure. but so am I. That you're cruiserweight. People don't know I'm big. You're big. They think they, they really can play don't. with me. They don't no, know no, I'm big. You, big. you get taller every time I see you. Really? Speaking of food. Let's oh, do man. It. Oh, you're going to hate this. Fuck. No, I love it. Do you know the Golden Archers question? Yes. We like to ask, you know, you're driving down the road, Code Orange is flying in the bandwagon or the bus. On this day, your driver lets you stop. Uh, there's a magical sign. They that never has, let you stop. They, and remember, never forget when Justice told them, pull over or we're going to fuck you up. That's yeah. a story that I, that I had always heard. Justice would tell me if that's true. But what I remember is, I don't know, they were touring. And this changed my mind about the whole thing. It was like... They were sitting there and they had had enough. Yeah. And they told the driver, you pull over, we're going to fuck you up. And then he started going to McDonald's. I don't know if that's true, Justice, my buddy, but I think it is. It's it adds up. It's deserved. The, the thing that's so. insane is the one of the last times we were there, we had this guy, Renfeld, an awesome Hungarian. The flick? <laughs> yeah. No, it, he was. The shitty flick with Nick Cage? Dude, it's so bad. It's pretty bad. He, he sang in a band that was all like vampire themed. His name was Renfeld. Anyway. <laughs> We asked him if we could go to the Eiffel Tower the first night in Paris, and he, he was like, of course. Like, I'm the driver of wherever you want to go. They work for us. And drove us, parked illegally at the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. That rocks. Anyway. That yeah, doesn't happen all, to me we, ever. We, you guys are Dracula. You know? yeah, One of our drivers right, yeah, tried to fight me in the parking lot over this shit. <laughs> Is one that true? Is that familiar? Wow. What uh, question? Hit him. So what's the place that's making uh, you put a gun to your driver's head and say, you better stop, motherfucker. We're going to fuck you, you know up. Where we eat all the time, not in Europe. Are we talking Europe? Yeah, or no, Europe? home. He home. can't. Fuck U.S. Me. We eat a lot of Chipotle. Yeah, dude, that's okay. I get it. I get it. I feel I'm, you hate I'm it. No, I do, here. but I get it. Because I it. can't. 
I fucking everybody. I love fast food. I really Reba's do. vegetarian. You know? I also can't function physically eating like shit all the time. Yeah, I just can't. I really want to, and I had a period where I could when I was younger, and I burnt the card out. And then mm. something started happening where like I'm feeling the stomach acid. I'm feeling it. Twenty seven. Yeah, that's twenty seven. It, it, it hits. So honestly, when I started doing jujitsu when I was like twenty. As soon as I started doing that, all of a sudden everything moved around and mm. shit couldn't hit right anymore. Mm. It was like it fucked my tolerance Your up. Bowels, right? So then, you know, we do a lot of Chipotle because me and Joe, we just eat a lot of like steak, vegetables, yeah. rice, shit like that. You can eat good, you can eat bad, you can eat clean, whatever. But I love I'm McDonald's. So I, I love McDonald's, dude. What's your McDonald's I just can. order? What's the order? I'm just getting probably triple cheeses, double cheeses. Now triple cheeses, you know. How many Some fries. Cheeses? I mean, I could easily eat. I could easily eat three. Okay, there you go. Yeah, that's Finally. Your, there's no, that's bitch, your, there's no yeah. bitch in my blood. Post I always eat three. My, my post gym is three triple cheese. Yeah. Six or ten. Nuggets. And you can take the buns off if you're trying to be a good boy. I guess. You yeah. can. I've done it, and then I'm probably going to go more. Because I'm going to need more patties. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Goldman's gonna eat a lot of a lot of patties. Is he? Goldman's gonna eat some, whatever you'll put in front of him. He can get through. There's not like a limit. It's just like his card is the way his bank account is set up. Oh, okay. His card is declined at a certain point. Oh, okay. Because you know he's not gonna spend a million dollars on triple cheeses. Sure. But if you keep giving them to them, he will keep eating them. <laughs> he can sure. eat as much as anyone I've ever met. It's a great answer. And my boys back home. I'm from Pittsburgh, so a lot of my buddies back home are some big brothers, and they always say they can eat. And that's a good compliment. They always say, Joe compliment. and I, they can eat. Well, the Big Mac also invented in Pittsburgh. So. There we go. There we go. So you're royalty. Wow. You know? I love it. Hmm. So thank you for supporting Ron. I love the Big Mac. It's delicious. It, it's a classic American sandwich, Frank. Of course. Um, and I know the fast food hard lore gimmick. I was anticipating this, you know. You did great. I like yeah, some Wendy's well. as well. I like some Wendy's Rock. Well. PA Wendy's is different. Wendy's Sometimes you guys Wendy's. will like, like Jack in the Box and no, shit like that. Never. What's the one you like that's questionable? There's one. None. Like Hardee's or something? No. no. All right. Just be careful. <laughs> I will. We had Wingstop. Oh, oh dude. UK Wingstop? Not bad. <laughs> I had Nando's yesterday. Oh, oh cheeky yeah. bastard. <laughs> Only thing I don't like, though, is my friends at home will be like, let's get Nando's at home. No. It's bad at home. No. It's shot at home. Well, the reason, no offense to the UK, but the reason we get it here is because we have a lot of other stuff. Yeah, else. we have everything else we that's really open do. late. A lot of good we coffee. go there because we have to go. Good There's coffee ice. anywhere. Ice and You the could drinks. even maybe make that meal at home. Here, I don't even think they sell the ingredients. <laughs> is that your bag? Does she have the same bag as you? Anyway. She might. She might. Maybe. Sounds about right. Well, this was a lovely chat. Yes. Um, I really think we kind of scratched the surface here. I, th I would love to keep going into it further in the future. Anytime you want. Post, or now. post album. Care. Yeah, yeah. There we you go. Know? Post. Yeah, sure. Post beat. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Post. Post well, album. Yeah. Post, post bullshit. And I want to shout out. Some ba I'm trying to. I like to shout out some like young bands, and I feel I'm about to be done. I'm coming. I'm coming. They'll be all right. No one's gonna watch that shit anyway. It's all like 15 second shit. I'm coming. Everybody's watching this one. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's all gonna be like gimmick.com, and it's gonna be like my shit all mixed up, yep. and it's gonna be a picture of me. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone's gonna be mad at me. Yep. So let's have take this happy moment. Exactly. Yes. Um, bands I like. Yes. Shouting out Codes World. Put a bunch of them on there. Yep. We got Vane. Who you know? I think we put Vane on what probably their first like real tour tour. Awesome story about them. We had a band we were friends with at the time, Lifeless. They dropped. I call Anthony from Vane. It was just like us. Can you be here next week? Yes. And they were there. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. how we became. They get it. My sister did their last album art with them, and they get it. They're fucking awesome. I'm good buddies with them. Love we them. got fucking. My buddy's Pain Clinic from Pittsburgh. Please check them out. They're they're new, but my jiu-jitsu coach is playing bass. One of my training partners is playing guitar. Check them out. It's going to hurt me. <laughs> my, my best friend, Tyler, is singing. Nice. And um, this uh, my other little friend, Devin's playing on the drums as well. So check them out from Pittsburgh. Um, who else? Gridiron. Those are my close buddies. Known them for years. Uh, Pain of Truth. Just check them out like Gangster. in the last year or so. Legendary. They're awesome. Yeah. Taking um, over the world. Who else we got? Regulate. My uh the singer Sebastian is my buddy as well. The best. King Nine, shout out to them. The best. Love King Nine. Love Dan. Um who two, else we got? Two, Name some other shit I might like. Isn't sta is Stab Wounds? Stab there? Wounds. Yeah, yeah. They're from Ohio area. Yeah. yeah so yeah. we they had little bands we were playing with back right. in the day right, as well. Right. Uh that band Vomit Fourth connected with oh them. Oh my god, dude. Uh I just connected with Love the kid. Love them. The not the kid, the grown man from Drain, the, the singer of Drain. Yeah, Sammy. We got on the phone and Beautiful he he just lad. sent us a nice message. That I didn't really expect. We got on the phone, talk for like an hour. Great kid, really, ha really happy to see. I'm again not ki not kidding him. Just sent. Yeah. Great man. Yeah. And uh, 
really happy to see their success because he just seemed like again stylistically obviously we're so different mm -hmm. aesthetically we couldn't be more different yeah but when we talk we have we, the we, I felt the, the all, realness it's all there yeah. and, all and so respect to them who else can we shout out let's put some people over Shout out to Twitching Tongues making the return. Mm. I don't know what the gimmick of the return is all the way. I don't what's revealed and all that. But there's a return. It's going down. And I believe there's going to be a bunch of shit. There Harm's Way just did. I can't. Did, no, nope. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> Harm's Way's doing <laughs> stuff <laughs> too. <laughs> and Harm's Way's a band. <laughs> I'm a big, I've been a big fan of Harm's Way my entire, basically, since I met this guy. And he showed me him. Mm. So love every record Harm's Way's ever done. The blue one is my least favorite, as I've told you. Is that true? I love yeah, the blinded one. Yes. Blinded, See, but Guess what? Still good, though. One of the hardest still pits good, though. ever, though. Mind Control? Great pit. Love that oh, pit. Hard it's still shit. fucking great. Thank you. And the last one was great. Yeah. And, the, and the the main first one is literally God-level Hall of Fame. Greatest, <laughs> greatest. And, I mean, the last one's fucking amazing, too, honestly. Those are my two favorite. Good. That one and the last one. Good. And I like Rust as well, so who else? Anybody? <laughs> I just want to listen. I don't get to do this a lot. I want to put people. There's a lot of good bands out there. A lot of good. A lot of bands I fucking hate. Mm. I will say that as well. We won't get into that. Of course, that's yeah. Where, yeah, but that's not. That's why where my we roads yeah. goes yeah. dark. You that's know? what. That's <laughs> like we we avoid that because that's like not the purpose. Exactly. And that's also. But of course, we do too. It's beneath you know? us. Yeah. We don't need it's to. It's beneath. You, just, you guys put everyone over. It's a put over machine over true. here. That is not. Oh accurate. yeah. I'm like, we're put, oh we're putting them over. We're putting everyone over. It's everyone's invited to the over party. But either way, <laughs> lots of good bands out there. Shit's stronger than it's ever been. It seems like yeah, it is nothing but love and respect. And uh, yeah. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Thank you so much, Jamie, for Thank joining you. us. Have a lovely set this Thank evening. Thank you all for watching. Support Code Orange. Uh, there will be news about some things soon. Check out this outbreak. We're about to run this shit. Well, that was I can't wait ago. to watch. How was Outbreak Fest? Dude, it was really hot. <laughs> yeah. Bye. <laughs>